If you're wondering why I generally always look horrible in these videos, I'm trying to give you just, you know, a slice of real life. Well, in the confessionals on the real world, they were, in the confessionals on the real world, they were like, it was like late at night, they would sneak in and they'd be like all sleepy face and in their jammies and or it'd be first thing in the morning or it'd be after like a fight and they were like all teary eyed. And so I'm just trying to be as authentic as possible. Also, this is what I generally look like most days. Terrible, tired, haggard. Today we're gonna talk about stay. And this is a controversial one because it's not my favorite on the album. I'm just gonna be honest. Not because it's not a great song, not because it's not a beautiful arrangement. It is both of those things. I don't know why. Like when I listen to the record, I happen to skip that song, which is probably not a good selling point. Maybe actually you will want to listen to it to be like, why doesn't she like it? It certainly serves a purpose. And so far the response to, you know, from the people who have heard the album, some people respond very strongly to this song. And I do appreciate it for the fact that I've never done a vocal like this uh, in my catalog anywhere. I had my friend Tim Davis vocal produce this album, and I've never had a proper vocal producer on a record before, but I, again, in an attempt to, to do the most and the best and make this the best possible project that I've done and pull out all the stops and really expand in my artistry, I wanted to do things that I'd never done before. I generally produce my own vocals. If you don't know what that means, having a vocal producer is having someone in the booth say sing it again and sing it like this do it again you were pitchy do it again uh approach it with more breath you know things like that so with stay he had heard my rough vocal from when we had recorded with the band and he said i just want you to do the least just the least and i had known in my mind if i'm approaching this vocal from you know an intention standpoint like what what am i trying to say or convey and I just thought like, to me, the lyric and the, and especially the arrangement that Alan created, I just thought it felt like that, like almost like someone bled you dry, almost like an addiction. If you've ever been in a relationship that is addictive, <laughs> you're, you can kind of get addicted to people and relationships and patterns and, and you really do, you, you can do a lot of damage to yourself. And I've been in that position and I think that's why this song speaks to me. And that's the meaning I draw uh, from it. And, and in approaching the vocal, I knew like, I just want to sound like there's barely any life left in me. And I don't want this song to grow. I want it to really keep a lid on it. And Tim and I were in agreement. And that's, that's my favorite part about the song is I think that the vocal is unique for me. I'm a big singer. I like to show you a lot of notes and a lot of riffing. And I don't do that in this song. It's very intimate. Let's call it that. I think it's a beautiful melody and it's the lyric that my favorite lyric in that song is funny you're the broken one but I'm the only one that needed saving that lyric I relate to that <laughs> no go lay down I'm doing a confessional Mimi Bean a confessional you go lay down she can't handle not being the center of attention stay track number I believe it's five track number five on Spectrum, due out February 9th, 2018.